Hello all. This is the last lecture of the unit one of software engineering. Uh, we were discussing regarding the software process modules. We uh, are on we are on the incremental model. The incremental model is a model which is used nowadays and development still is taking place currently using this model sometimes there is a compelling need to provide a limited set of software functionality to the users quickly and then expand on other functionalities in later releases hence we choose to produce and deliver in an incremental fashion for example, let us take the uh, Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word processing is nothing but it is giving you functionality of document production. So it is going to help you with document production as a main feature. Now, uh, that is something which is desperately needed by the clients. So we are providing it in the first release. Next is. Uh, such kind of main functions when released are called a core product if your core product is nice it is successful then you will be given orders for later incremental delivery otherwise your uh, organization may fail to grab that project in their hand okay word uh, documentation can be a main functionality then that after uh, this core product is delivered in the first increment they uh, can provide functionalities like file management like editing in the second increment they can provide spelling checking grammar checking and in third increments they can provide page layout margins etc okay so uh, when your basic requirements are delivered supplementary requirements are undelivered and you are focusing on delivery of operational product with each and every increment then this model is said to be the evolution or uh, the in uh, incremental model okay the incremental model as you can see is uh, something like this you are having uh, projects delivered in increments as you can see we are seeing this is the first release or the core product this is the second release and so on the end release okay so it consists of the five generic framework activities which are communication this is communication this is planning this is modeling this is construction and this is deployment okay so these are the various generic framework activities which are taking place so when you have uh, to deliver a core product you will find out which are the various features which are required by the client on immediate basis so they are delivered in this core product so the core product is first we are sitting with the communication we are doing communication with the stakeholders we are planning we are scheduling how to go forward we are then modeling means we are creating a pictorial representation for the client to understand we are coding and testing it here then we are delivering it to the client and taking feedback after this product is successful they will give us an order we will have a second uh, incremental delivery so the second feature will also be implemented in this particular fashion so as many number of features you have that many number of increments you will have to release okay not necessary that many because you can deliver more than one functions in a particular increment so uh, depending on that you will decide how many increments you want okay now where this model will be used this model will be used where initial software requirements are very well defined the client is completely clear that he wants these features in the as a core product 
Next is there is a compelling need to provide a limited set of functionalities or a core product is very compelling to be delivered. Means the client cannot wait for more. He wants the uh, functionality on immediate basis. Next is expansion wanted in later releases. So if the client says I don't have proper funding currently, you give me this in the later releases. But currently I can provide you money for this particular core product. So expansion when wanted in later releases, this model can be useful. It is also useful where there is staffing scarcity. So let us take an example if you are starting a new company. In that case, you will first find out you will have a limited number of people recruited. So if you want to take a small pro uh, project in your hand, you can develop a core product, you can win the heart of the client and you can bring back work in your organization. You can then increase members later on. So if you have a staffing scarcity, you can use this model. When you have strict and short deadlines. Now it is just infeasible to deliver so many features when you have a very short deadline which is to be strictly followed. So in that case, you need to span your project throughout the whole schedule and give away the software in terms of frequent delivery or frequent releases. When you have less budget, you can use this software, uh, this model. The reason being, you don't have to pay for the whole model, whole uh, software at the same time. You can release payment when you get the delivery. You can also use this when you want to handle large projects. Large projects, you know, you can lose your way in this project. So what you can do is you can, uh, as and when you uh, start completing uh, the functionalities, you start delivering them. So that will be an easy and effective method of handling a very large project. What are the advantages of the incremental model? The incremental model has many advantages. The first is when you have inadequate staff, you're starting a new company, you have less staff. So less staff will be able to work less. Work less, less features. Less features, faster delivery. And faster delivery means incremental model. Next is meet early release of products. Means you have a strict deadline, a short deadline. You are able to, uh, you are given the flexibility of partially delivering your product. You don't have to deliver the whole product, just a part of it. Flexible and initially less expensive. You don't have to pay for the whole project. Instead, you have to pay only for the functionality that is being delivered to you. Easy error identification, testing and debugging. Of course, it will be very easy because you are working on just some features and not the whole software. So you know where you are going to find errors in your program. It becomes very easy because you need to check for from a very less amount of data as compared to the whole project. Okay. Next is risk management. Risk management also can be done easily because you are not going to handle the whole project at the same time. You are handling only a part of it. Now disadvantages of the incremental model is Partial functionality is being delivered and not the whole product. So if you are expecting that when you will get your core product, you will be able to work very efficiently, then that is a wrong notion. Because some of the other features which may not be useful currently are still not with you. So if there is an emergency to use those features, you will not be able to use them. It requires a good plan and design. Because if you do not plan properly, you won't be able to implement the products or the incremental deliveries properly. And this model will be successful only if your core product is successful. If your core product fails, the incremental model will not have any uh, benefits for you because you won't be able to deliver the next increments after your core product. The next is the RAD model. RAD is nothing but rapid application development model. 
the name itself is suggesting that it gives you a very rapid form of delivery and also it gives you a high quality delivery okay uh, first let us see the diagram it consists of the software development life cycle phases communication planning modeling construction and deployment all the five are present communication phase you already know the whole team sits along with the customer the stakeholder the requirements are gathered the requirements are analyzed they are written on a specific piece of paper and they are a jot down in the srs or your software requirement specification report then uh, you are planning means you are creating a schedule that how many resources will be allocated how many team members are needed in this case in a rad model you also have to decide the total number of sub teams that you need to make okay uh, what is your budget the, all the resources you will plan so that you will be able to meet the deadlines and deliver a high quality product next is in this model after the planning your team a big team will be separated or divided into sub teams so that the work can occur parallelly next you are every team will be designing a model model is nothing but a pictorial representation of all the requirements that were gathered during the communication phase after pictorially representing it you are designing and you are putting code to it so you will uh, now start writing your code you will start programming and you will start a unit testing every team will do the unit testing because after planning whatever work you have decided will be divided into certain modules so modularity is the best concept it is used in the uh, and is applied in the rad model after planning the work is divided into modules these modules are assigned to different teams every team will be creating a pictorial representation of the work that they have been allotted then they will be uh, up, after the design they will start programming or the coding they will do individually the unit testing of the modules that they are handling and after that they will integrate all the models together all the code together and perform integration testing thereafter the whole software system will be clubbed together and delivered or deployed to the client the client will then the client as well as the stakeholders they will give you feedbacks regarding the project and based on that you can perform future uh, enhancements or improvements now this rad model can be used where system can be modularized or broken into small subtasks if that is not possible this model cannot be used next is if you have a very high budget because you are dividing the task you will be uh, of course reducing the delivery time so you require a high budget also high resource availability as you can see the number of teams that you require your task is happening in parallel so you require more infrastructure you require manpower you require uh, cost so everything will be more and last is you need an expert team a team which is actually you can say a self organizing team where they are uh, very uh, very responsible and they don't wait for orders they should be able to get or uh, get their responsibilities and work towards progress advantages of this uh, approach is it is a flexible and adaptable to changes as you are working on small modules rework will become easy reduction in manual coding because you can reuse the already built components to the object oriented approach of pro, uh, programming approach you can also take help of code generators so that you can reuse the code the disadvantages of this model is it cannot be used for smaller projects because you won't be able to modularize them 
failure when deadlines are not abided so if one of the teams fails to uh, complete their task in the deadline then integration will have to wait and due to that the deadline will not be met next is highly skilled developers are required you need to pay them more and if the system is not modularized the rad model will fail next is a specialized development model that is a component based model the component based model is nothing but a specialized software model in which the software components are developed by an organization and it offers the products and provides a targeted functionality with very well defined interfaces and it enables the components to be easily integrated into the software that is to be built by the organization that is buying the cots cots or the component based development application now uh, we can see that uh, advantages of this approach is reusability you don't need to code again you just need to uh, buy the code that is available with the from the vendor and you can uh, integrate it in your regular software so it is uh, going to reduce the development time it is going to reduce the cost of development and you can meet the deadlines early or in time the disadvantage is uh, there are integration issues and uh, the components that you make will be application specific so if you are preparing gui tools then they are used only for integrating the graphic user interface but they won't help you with coding and you need to test for ensuring whether they are functioning properly because the software delivered may be having some sort of error so if you are buying something from outside you need to make sure you need to test that they are functioning properly and the last topic of the chapter is process versus product what is the difference between process and product so the basic concept of a process is you cannot see it it just happens and you are a part of it but you cannot touch it so they are just the steps which are followed to make a product whereas a product is nothing but something you can see something you can touch so it is the final result of the development cycle the focus of process is on each step that is used or made to make the product so process has a focus on the steps like communication planning deployment coding testing integrating so these are the process steps and product is nothing but what are you getting after doing all these steps what is the final outcome of the steps next you have a life of process which is very long term a process will go through so many stages like communication like planning like deployment like construction like modeling designing etc but a product is a very short term thing means after your delivery or when you are delivering you are making a product but that's over and last is goal goal is a uh, process will help you to make a good quality product which is excelling in quality and which is made in time and product is something which you need to deliver and it should work successfully without any failures that's all for this chapter thank you and have a good day